Hello Patreon family, welcome to our weekly update. Happy end of the month or happy beginning of the month. It all depends on your perspective. Happy Daylight Savings Time, happy Halloween, happy day to you. Thank you so much as always for doing your thing as you do. Here's my thing this week for you. I'm going to be sending you five hunks of audio, all songs from the first album, and all five of these songs were recorded on the same day, which was February 11th, 1963. A really big deal day in the world of the Beatles. The first song you're going to hear about is Baby It's You. It's one of the girl group songs that the Beatles covered that were originally done by females, the Shirelles in this case, who also originally did Boys, as well as the song Soldier Boy, which is where McCartney took some inspiration for P.S. I Love You. In 1961, when the Shirelles released the record, the Beatles got their hands on it right away, and as soon as they got it, they started performing it. John Lennon immediately taking the lead vocal on it, because even though it wasn't a Lennon composition, it had some very, very Lennon-type lyrics in it about Baby It's You. Um, on February 11th, uh, John Lennon wasn't feeling especially great. It was really cold during the winter, and uh, all the band was uh, pretty run down. As the day wore on, John's voice started cracking a little bit more. You can actually hear his voice struggling a little bit on what is take three of the song. You'll hear what the last song of the day was later today, actually. Another song you're going to hear about is a little bit of a rarity. It's called Do You Want to Know a Secret? And it's a song that George Harrison sung lead on, but Lennon and McCartney wrote it. And technically, it's a McCartney-Lennon song on the first record. For whatever reason, no one ever seems to know the tracks are credited McCartney Lennon as opposed to the more common Lennon McCartney. Um, it's primarily a song written by John and it's rare because it's mostly a pure true love song which he didn't really have a whole lot of throughout his Beatle years. There's some inspiration that comes from a song from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs called I'm Wishing. You get to hear a little bit of audio from that. You also get to hear a little bit of an inspiration from a song called I Really Love You which is by a doo-wop band called The Stereos. George Harrison recorded the solo version of that song. Um, Do You Want to Know a Secret was also done by Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, and that was the song that landed them a record deal. As I said before, the Beatles recorded it on February 11th of 63. There was only a small handful of live versions for the BBC, but then um, the songs and the performances that they had at the time were quickly surpassed, and they dropped that from their lineup. The third song you're going to hear about is A Taste of Honey, which is another cover, another one recorded on February 11th of 63 when the band primarily played the highlights from their live act and recorded them. Now, the version that the Beatles were familiar with was from 1962 by a guy named Lenny Welch. Uh, this is the first version of A Taste of Honey that had words to it. Before that, there was a couple of instrumental hits. A big one that the Beatles knew about was Victor Feldman from 1962. And the song itself comes from a play which was turned into a film called The Taste of Honey. In October of 62, the Beatles did it for the BBC, and in December of 62, they played it on the, um, uh, the New Year's Eve show that we talk about from time to time. We'll hear some recordings from that as well. When they recorded it in the studio, Ringo used what they called the jazz brushes, which are those drum brushes that they thought were very, very classy. Uh, the fourth song is a Lennon-McCartney original, again, a McCartney-Lennon original. It's called There's a Place. It's a very early one, and it really has a lot of um, themes that John Lennon would uh, talk about later on in a lot of his songs. The, he said he was trying to write a Motown song, Paul said they took the inspiration from a song from the West Side Story soundtrack called Somewhere. You could, again, make up your mind on where you think the inspiration came from. John and Paul also said that they were trying to be smarter in their songs, even though they had to also make them romantic love songs, which they didn't really know much about otherwise. The first verse is kind of vague. The second verse gets more into the love and the romance of it. Um, Self-analysis is something that John Lennon would... Uh, greatly uh, contribute to, and he would use this tool a lot as he recorded and wrote songs throughout his year. The Beach Boys took some inspiration for this song for In My Room, and again, there's only a small handful of live recordings. The fifth and final song you're going to get this week is Twist and Shout, which is really interesting because it was the last song recorded on that day, February 11th of 63. They were tired, their voices were getting down, they really had to pump themselves up to get this final track done, knowing that the album really needed to end with a big finish and twist and shout, it was. Apparently there is a second take of the song, although take one is the one that was released, but John Lennon's voice just gave out completely as the day 
wore on. Um, it was originally done by, um, well, the Beatles were uh, familiar with the version that the Isley Brothers recorded, although it was originally done as Shaken Up Baby by the Top Notes in 1961. They played the song on the Ed Sullivan Show and on a lot of big performances throughout the years, all the way through 1965 and 66. They performed it live. Speaking of 1965 in music, I've been working real hard on the British Invasion section of Volume 3 of Textbook Beatles. Been dealing with the Zombies, the Yardbirds, Petula Clark, and Herman's Hermits. I finished up my Kinks section, and all this week I'm going to be um, focusing on those other artists. In the meantime, thank you a million times over, and you have a great day, and you have a great week, and I will talk to you again. I'm Professor Moptop. Have I said thank you?